Hey guys, Pixel here. Welcome back to another video looking at interesting Windows distros. Today's theme, I mock operating systems being brought into reality. Last year, I made a video on Windows Longhorn, the cancelled Windows operating system that later became Vista. One of the most notable pieces of material from this era was the 2003 PDC presentation, named Get Users to Fall in Love with Your Software, where Hylel Cooperman explains the eventual vision for Longhorn, showcasing transparency effects and system animations, rich content previews within Explorer, the overhauled notification system, and more. However, he does mention something that can be easily glanced over. This happens to be a prototype that's built in Director. Yeah, this is a mock-up created in Shockwave Director. However, thanks to the user Ojas, we can experience this conceptual version of Longhorn for ourselves. The concept video starts with the Sony VAIO BIOS. They claim that their computer went to sleep. However, I almost wonder if this is there to showcase something that hadn't been seen on most computers at the time, and that is a beautiful, clean animation within the BIOS. It also complements the conceptual bootloader, which features the Windows flag changing from full color to a glass pane with the Windows color sliding across the glass, eventually turning monochrome. Absolutely beautiful. We then end the boot animation with a welcome to Windows text, with the animated Aurora background fading in and being pushed further back, while the login box jumps onto the screen and expands. The Longhorn Recreation ISO, on the other hand, is limited by what Windows can actually do. So we just get a monochrome Windows flag for the boot screen, and then we get a more basic version of the Logon UI, with just a drop-down animation. Still pretty, though the Windows flag doesn't animate, and neither does the Aurora. It also really bothers me that they use the so-called Longhorn system sounds, which are actually just taken from Samsung's digital theme pack for Windows XP, and otherwise has nothing to do with Longhorn. In the concept, the login window contracts as you wait for Windows to log in. In the recreation, we get text that drops down, similar to real Longhorn ISOs. Afterwards, in the concept, we get this completely improbable animation where the login box literally morphs into the start screen, while the gadgets bar slides in from the right and the Aurora crossfades into the desktop wallpaper. The gadgets then populate one by one via a fade-in animation. The recreation does things a little bit differently, with a nice slide-up animation on the gadgets bar, and then the gadgets all pop in at once. Let's talk about the first two striking features of this concept of Longhorn the gadgets bar and the start menu. Both have been recreated nearly one-to-one -one within this ISO. The gadgets bar has been recreated by the open source Avalon Bar project. The recreation ISO replaces the concepts list of email addresses to be quick launch shortcuts instead. The search bar works, being a global explorer search, which is cool. The recent emails in the concept became a to-do list. We then get a web widget, a Windows Media Center widget, an RSS feed and a clock. The start menu is handled by the open source start menu replacement vStart. While there are no lights behind the Windows logo that cycle between the four Windows colors like in the concept, and the Windows logo and left bar elements don't animate either, the start menu is otherwise pretty legit. While we don't get to see the animated Aurora within Logon UI, we do however have the option to enable it on the desktop, and it looks beautiful. We also get other Longhorn era wallpapers to choose from too. In terms of theming, the strange minimize, maximize and exit buttons have been recreated faithfully, as well as the different levels of transparency within this concept. Explorer has also been deeply modified to look like the concept. There are many differences between the ISO and the concept, but that is likely down to how far you can modify Windows 7's Explorer without making a full-on replacement. Though I am impressed to see that the bookmarks and open tabs are here in the ISO, though only for show as they are non-functional. Likewise, the Aurora once again does not move, but the colors do change depending on the type of folder that you are in, like both the concept Longhorn and the leaked Longhorn builds. And we do get the rich thumbnails and metadata information shown. I love these CD thumbnails especially. Songs within embedded album covers have a shine to them, like you've just taken a picture of that CD case. And ones without album art once again look like a picture of a jewel case missing its cover. Plenty of icons within this recreation are faithful to the concept, and I love them. They really look like unpolished versions of Vista's icons, with their plastic and glass look to them, with real life elements like printers and footballs looking overly shiny and smooth. Like the concept and real Vista, the transparency disappears when you maximize the window. However, the bottom bar and gadget bar does not change transparency, which is a shame. Most of the apps within this ISO are stock Windows apps, though I noticed that Paint is taken from the Milestone 2 build of Windows 7, when Windows 7 era features were added, but the ribbon bar was nowhere to be seen. The calculator program looks like it was taken from XP, likewise with WordPad, that is a modified version of XP's one. The media player is a reskin of Winamp, and the media center has been reskinned to feature Longhorn elements like the purple Aurora and purple icons. Winver has also been completely overhauled to actually be useful, with shortcuts to relevant system settings and showing you your system specs. And hey, look at that! We have an animated Windows flag and Aurora! Finally! 
As I show you the modified OOB, I want to make a final note for transparency's sake that OJAS has been accused of taking parts of other Windows modifications without credit by the user I'm Sword Queen. You may remember from the Windows 7 transformation pack video from a while back. Hence why I always make a point to mention the software used within custom Windows distros. Also, this mod is pretty difficult to get running on actual hardware, and I couldn't even get it to post on VMware, and had to resort to VirtualBox, software I haven't used for around a decade. For a more stable experience, I recommend checking out Windows Vista Delta. That distro serves a slightly different experience, transforming Windows Vista into looking like the leaked builds of Longhorn, as opposed to replicating the 2003 concept video, but it's still fun to play around with. I don't know about you, but when I was a tween, I loved the parody of Windows operating systems that I used to see on sites like Newsground and Albino Black Sheep, as well as watching the Computer Clan's fake operating system videos. From all of the parodies that I've played though, one stuck in my mind, as well as in many other people's minds, and that is Windows RG. It certainly must have been everywhere, because I stumbled upon it numerous times, and having been created in 2001, it really was the inspiration for countless other Windows parody flash games for years to come. It's a bit crude nowadays. The joke is basically that Windows ME sucks, crashes often, and does what you don't want it to. But at the dawn of the new internet era with faster internet connections, little gimmicks like these parody games were breaking new ground. This brings me to the point of today's video. A clever fellow YouTuber by the name of Windestruct had modified Windows ME to become Windows RG. So let's take a look. The first quirk of this ISO is the fact that it's a ghost image. Now while I have certainly heard of ghosts before, my school ran it unattended every now and again, I really struggled to wrap my head around it. I found a quirk to be, partition the drive, install the image, go back to the installer, wipe the drive with MS-DOS, install the image, go back to the partitioning tool, delete the partition so the drive is unformatted, let MS-DOS format it again, and boom it works. But then I ran into another issue. When under VMware, Windows ME, or rather RG, kept getting stuck on this PCI driver. The system would either hang, the installer would loop, I would get error messages so cryptic and random they certainly threw me off guard. I genuinely thought that this was a parody error message, it's perfect. PCEM wouldn't boot from the CD, and when trying the Windows 98 floppy boot image out of curiosity, the MS-DOS Oak drivers couldn't find the CD drive. But I finally got it all up and running on 96box. And yep, it's all here! All of the 2001 jokes! Windestruct had recreated all of Windows RG applications using Visual Basic 2005 Express, and they are one-to-one -one replicas of what you see in the Flash game. Even Windows elements got modified, like the boot screen, Winver, the non-ACPI shutdown screen, and Windows Explorer, all to look as authentic as possible. Of course, with me being curious, I wanted to see what makes this OS tick. And funnily enough, after changing folder options, I launched into an easter egg. It's not until later on that I realised that the dev had left a breadcrumb to help you find it. We also have the original Flash game bundled in, so you can experience Windows RGception. And it also helps to appreciate the attention to detail that was put in by the developer. Thank you for watching this video. Please make sure to hit subscribe, as there will be new content coming soon. Cheers!